Hi everyone, how are you going? I'm Nick from Sibling Architecture and I'm here to present uh, our Music Market project to you today. So the Music Market was a, an initiative by Creative Victoria and it brings together a series of peak music bodies, um, including Music Victoria, The Push, which is a youth organisation, and the Music uh, Victoria Development Office, which is about business development. Um, and so the spaces is really about bringing these offices together, creating co-working spaces, educational facilities, and also performance, also a performance venue. So it's a place of dialogue, exhibition, and cultural production within the city. So it's located at the Collingwood Yards, or formerly the CAP site in Collingwood, along Johnson Street. Uh, and the project was split across Building F on Johnson Street and Building C. So Building F, uh, located on Johnson Street, you can see here, and the scope of our project uh, in Building F was the, the lower ground floor and the upper ground floor, and noting um, the Keith Haring mural that is, was on our eastern facade, and that's uh, listed with Heritage Victoria and has an eight metre registration zone going into the interior, so formed a big part of the project. Uh, this is Building C. The interiors of um, Building F, when Nike were using it as an ad campaign when we first uh, got into the space. Um, what's interesting about the site as well is the synergies that are located around it. So we've got the Tote Hotel, which is Melbourne's sort of home of rock and roll, uh, PBS Radio moving in next door to the music market, and the Spiegel Tent. So there's a really nice uh, precinct synergy for music happening here at the moment. So the project is effectively, as I mentioned, across two buildings with the office spaces located in Building C for those peak bodies, the co-working space on the ground floor of Building F, and the upper ground floor having the um, education space and the um, performance space, and again the mural and the eight metre registration zone that we dealt with. We took the synergy between music and architecture as a driving point for the concept, so using dynamics, rhythm, composition, texture and harmony as a way to uh, synthesise and think about the spaces spatially. The spaces were also thought of a sequence of performances through all of the spaces, so everything that you would uh, engage with would have a sort of performative quality to it as well. Um, we thought about all of the spaces having both a dual duality of being a social space as well as a workspace, so the whole space can become a co-working space as well. There's an audio-visual overlay that I guess gives information to people visiting the space but also augments the space during uh, performance mode. And then the white uh, zigzag uh, patination here is an extensive acoustic baffling system that we implemented into the space. And so that gives the quality of a recital hall but also doesn't feel like one, so it's much more welcoming and engaging with the people who are going to be using the space. So this is the ground floor, um, the ground floor plan. We've got the, uh, a co-working space here, a music presentation room, uh, the VMDO office here, the boardroom, uh, and this is all and the Keith Haring mural located here. The upper ground floor has this entry corridor located to the, um, to the south face. Uh, we've got an education room at the back, the stage and performance room uh, to in, the, in the middle, and then the green room located at the back. Those two rooms are separated by a flexible wall, which allows it to operate as one, and then the bar punctuates into the floor plan. And the bar um, isn't always a bar, so this, this project has a very much a day and a night function, and so when the bar's not being used in that function, it's a space where people can enter into the rooms and kind of get a glimpse into what's going on of the events taking place of the day. So the mural, as we mentioned, was a pretty significant part of the project. We had to work closely with our heritage architect, our, um, the conservator of the mural and the, um, and the acoustic engineers to create a design that really suited the mural and protected it. So we placed the stage within the eight metre registration zone, facing all the music and the vibration away from the mural, and also the green room acts as a buffer to the mural, and again, people dancing in the space uh, are causing no impact to the, to the mural's delicate paint. Interestingly, the whole uh, interior had to be isolated from the existing structure for vibrational purposes. So we rubber isolated the floor, walls and ceilings of the entire space. And extensive vibration testing was done during, uh, at the beginning, during construction and at the end to ensure the design was working. So a material palette of perforation was employed to begin to reveal layers of history of the site as well. And where walls were removed, we began to leave the ghost of, them, of their past, creating a palimpsest of history through the site as well. Spotted gum timber was used to add texture to the spaces as well. And again, existing doors uh, and windows were repurposed uh, where they were taken away in other parts. And again, revealing moments of the history of the site uh, wherever we could. 
Building C's interiors again reinforce that idea of the palimpsest of history and we began to reveal elements like the timber floors. This is the public entrance into the performance space on the upper ground floor. Um, and this glistening green entrance, uh, I guess, beckons you into the, into the entrance of the music market. And this is that corridor space, which I guess functions in a co-working space, but also as a social kitchen during the day. And you begin to see this LED audiovisual um, signage that begins to talk about the happenings of the day in the space. Flexible joinery uh, allows for collaboration to occur and also closes the bar off during that active mode. And so this can become a servery or a ticketing area. Uh, looking at the back, wherever we demolished again, revealing the brickwork where that was left, and this green glistening uh, ceiling in the bar begins to beckon you into those other spaces. So here you can begin to see that connection from the bar, say in a more day-to-day -day sense where you get that connection into those spaces. This is an image of the corridor. So this is the, uh, an image of the main space, and this is where you really begin to see that acoustic uh, system at play. So it's suspended from the ceiling and up on the walls, and the floor is all raised here. Uh, flexible furniture and lighting mean that the space can transition from day to night venue uh, quite seamlessly. AV elements within the space are also integrated to ensure that they can function separately. The operable wall uh, allows for that flexibility between the two spaces as well, opening it up. And you can start to see uh, some of the audio-visual elements within the space that augment it from a performance point of view. So there's a fully functioning stage within the space, um, but also when it's not in, in a stage mode, can act as another workspace within the, um, within the centre. And again, all of these original windows were really celebrated and bring in beautiful natural light um, and are, are also part of the acoustic system within the, within the centre. All of the spaces are conceived to be co-working spaces when they're not in their activated mode, as you can begin to see here. And blinds, uh, blackout blinds are located throughout the space to ensure that during the day you can completely close the space down and it can become a, effectively a night venue at any time during the day. You can begin to see some of the compositions of all of the elements throughout the space and working with the existing uh, structures that were already in the space. Uh, this is a view of the bar looking directly forward. So the operable wall terminates at the centre of the bar. The bar can then operate in two ways, into either room, or when the walls open can operate as a full bar. The teaching lectern is located um, within the bar as well. So this is where all of the, uh, I guess, elements to perform I guess a workshop or a lecture can be taken from. And this is the view looking back through that bar, uh, back into that entrance corridor. The tech desk is also located in the bar, which um, I guess is the main sort of technical hub for the whole space, but also doubles as a DJ booth, uh, depending on the mode of the space as well. The green room located at the back is literally that, green. Um, and I guess the, the studded rubber wall was deliberately chosen. Uh, this is, there's a new wall built there um, in front of the Keith Haring mural. It's on the other side. Uh, and a rubber wall was deliberately chosen for its vibrational impact qualities, but also, I guess, the light quality play that begins to come into the space as well. Uh, elements of the history, wherever we could, were preserved and, I guess, celebrated through the site. And the lighting quality, again, I guess, starts to beckon towards the street um, and, I guess, lets people know about what's going on in the building. Um, and so, I guess, the light quality and the augmentation of the AV really begins to yeah, gesture to the Collingwood community about uh, the events that are taking place in the space. So I'll just end on a video which really uh, shows, I guess, the, the space when it's in uh, its full, I guess, performative uh, elements. I'm happy to take any questions. I should have had some uh, music going as well. <laughs> but you can see here, the, I guess all of, the, all of these screens and audiovisual elements can work independently or they can work together. So you can, and as well as the scrolling text, that also can double as a screen, so it can be part of that system. So it works in sort of several different modes throughout the space. And you can see the bar uh, being opened up into the space here. But yeah, that's the that's the project. <laughs>